today we are hooking up Alexa to our home assistant so that we can control all of our lights. Hey Alexa, turn off all of my lights. Okay. Alexa, turn all my lights back on. Okay. So that's what we are going to do in this video. And the best part, it is completely free. Normally when you try to add an Alexa device, you have to pay for a Home Assistant cloud subscription offered by Nabu Casa. And it is ridiculously expensive at about a hundred Australian dollars a year, which I just could not justify. So here is a better method that you can follow for free. We're gonna start by opening up Home Assistant, heading over to settings, and we wanna click on devices and services. Click add an integration, and we wanna search for Hue. Now the one we're gonna click on is emulated Hue. It'll say open up documentation, and we're gonna have a quick read. What this does is it acts as a virtual bridge, allowing your Alexa device to connect to your lights, which are in Home Assistant. So when I say, Alexa, turn off all my lights, instead of just turning off these, okay. It should, in theory, be able to turn off those and the other ones right behind me. Alexa, turn all my lights back on. Okay. We have to do this through code. It seems only some devices are supported. If you use Google Assistant, you might run into issues and you should be assigning a static IP address to whichever server Home Assistant is currently running on. A static IP address means the IP address of your Home Assistant will never change. If you don't do this and that changes in the future, this integration will break. You'll have to go in, update your code and give a reboot. We're gonna remote into our server where Home Assistant is running on and we're going to modify a certain file to put this in code. So I'm gonna open up my Home Assistant configuration file. We're gonna copy this bit of code and chuck it into our config. So I'm just gonna add it right down the bottom. Now for Alexa devices, you have to use port 80. You'll notice in some of the documentation, it changes it to other ports. That won't work for Alexa devices, so make sure you set it to 80. We're going to also set our host IP address. Next, we're going to set this exposed by default to false. Now, if we leave this to the default value of true, Alexa will be able to access every single device within Home Assistant that we have set up. Whereas I want to just add the very specific lights that we want the integration to work with. If you leave it set to true, make sure you don't have more than 49 devices as you will run into issues. All right, now we're going to copy this entity section and this is where we're going to specify exactly which lights we want to add. Now the way to get the exact ID, if you head over to your, if you go back to Home Assistant and head to your entities tab, this is a list of all of the entities with the ID. So if I search for light, I've got all of my lights here and I simply just copy the entity ID. All right, it doesn't let us copy and paste, so we're just gonna type it manually. For our first one, it's gonna be light.pegboard. We're gonna give it a friendly name. So this is the name within our Amazon device that we wanna say out loud. I'm gonna say pegboard. And you want to set the value of hidden to false. Basically this hidden value by setting it to false, we'll allow our device to pick it up. I have two other lights that I want. I want my nano leaf life. That's not a nice name. There's an easier way we can do this. If you go to any of your dashboards and click on the, on the light you want to add, click into it, click settings, and you can copy that to your clipboard. Dot nano leaf, hidden equals false, and we'll give it a nice friendly name. And we're gonna do one more for our office desk. 
which are these whiz lights over here. So we'll go ahead and save that file. Uh, it opened up as read only. That's annoying. I'm going to copy everything so I don't lose it. Don't save. Oh, we'll do this the old school way. Open up the terminal, go to Home Assistant, and we're going to nano into our config file. Unwritable. Okay, we're going to go sudo nano configuration. I'm just going to hold Control K to clear everything, and I'm going to right click and go paste. Okay, there we go. Going to Control X and hit Y to save. So now if I do a cat of our config file, I can see our new config in there. So what we're going to do is head back to Home Assistant. We're going to go to Settings, click the three little dots, and go Restart Home Assistant. This will apply those new changes that we made. Home Assistant is back online, so now we are going to ask Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. Turn on your new devices now, and if needed, put them in pairing mode. This will take a couple of minutes. I found and connected three new devices, including lights. Try saying, turn off office desk. It has now picked up our devices. So now, if I say, Alexa, turn off all my lights. Ah, it's okay. dark. Okay, Alexa, turn all my lights back on. Oof. Okay. And there you have it. We were able to connect all of our lights to our Amazon Alexa device. And what's really, really cool about this, not only did we not have to set up any custom skills or pay for any cloud subscription services, but my device has presence detection. So that means instead of me doing automations like this, where I have all my lights automatically set to turn on in the morning and automatically set to turn off at night, in theory, now because they're all hooked up to my Amazon Echo device, I could use presence detection. So it could detect when somebody comes into the room, turns everything on, and then when people leave, turn it all off automatically, which is so much better than what I currently have where it is static. Now that's going to be in my next video. So if you wanted to see that, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will catch you in the next video.